praise God. The choir want to remind you this morning that the eyes of the Lord is guiding you this morning. Glory to God. We just want to just pray us up while we minister in Jesus' name.
Zechariah chapter 29, 11 through 14. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Then shall he call upon me and he shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. And he shall seek me and find me when he shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you said the Lord and I will bring you again into the place whence I cause you to be carried away captive gracious God and our father we stand again to declare the word of God and we do so without fear nor favor the word is intended, Lord, to bring deliverance, to bring healing, to rescue, to save, to heal, to deliver, to set free. And I pray that not one person in my audience today in this church house and in our viewing audience will be untouched. But I pray that the fire will fall. I pray that the water will gush from under the threshing floor of the altar. And it will wet and burn everyone that must be wet and must be burned by the fire and the water of God. Mm, Holy Spirit, hear my prayer in Jesus' name. God's thoughts concerning me. That's my theme. And I need to extend it and not being selfish. God's thoughts concerning me. God's thoughts concerning you. God's thoughts concerning us. Lift your right hand and say, God's thoughts concerning me. God's thoughts concerning you. Touch your neighbor. Say, you neighbor, you, you, you. Now wave your hands and say, God's thoughts concerning us. Hallelujah. If God exists, he must be a thinking God. And the very fact that God exists, he is a thinking God. Verse 11 of the text says, Amen, Jeremiah chapter 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil. The thoughts are to give you a good hand, an expected hand. Oh, praise God. And if you don't shout at that, I don't know what you're going to shout at today. God said, I want to give you your expected hand, the desires of your heart. Come on, somebody. Those are my thoughts concerning you. I will confirm upon your life that which you have decreed. I will bring it to pass so long as they find the center of my will. Hmm. Oh, glory to God. And because we do not operate in the carnal mind, but we operate in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, we operate in the mind of Christ. So the things that we are going to desire will be according to the will of God. So get ready. I don't know how you're going to take me for 2001. Because God said it's a year of blessing. And I don't know how you're going to take me because this is a stream I'm coming down. Lift your hand and say, this is the year of blessing. Hallelujah. My God. <laughs> Glory. So those of you remember the little of the message on last week, 
God says 70 years of captivity. I caused you to be carried into Babylon. It was providential that I have you there because I have a plan. And because I have a plan, it must be executed through a process. Where there is a plan, there must be a process to execute that plan. So God said when you deal properly, when you handle your adversity and make the best of it, after that time is expired, after that time is elapsed, I am going to turn things around. And I guess that what was preached here on Friday night, God will turn things around. Give him a praise. So after God's people have properly dealt with the adversity of being in captivity for over 70 years, Amen. God said, I have set a time. I have put a limit upon evil. And I know I'm getting ready to take you into another dimension. I'm going to move you out of captivity. And I'm going to turn even the land of your captivity into a fruitful land for you to dwell in. So when I told you not to murmur and to grumble and to complain. When I tell you to to build houses and plant vineyards and marry wife and bear children and populate the land is because I know that I'm going to cause you to inherit that very land of your adversity. Oh God, I feel I'm going to preach a little here this morning. Come on, oh God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not stay there with barrenness around you, God said. Because it's only a matter of time. You will be in charge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's only a matter of time. Joseph will be in charge. He has been lied on. He has been sent to prison. He has been hated and rejected, thrown in the pit. But it's only a matter of time. Joseph will be in charge. Hallelujah. So don't blight your future. Don't take your life. Don't murmur. Let the Lord have his way in your life every day. There be no rest. There be no peace until the Lord have his way. Let God take you by the hand and let him lead you wherever he will. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him all the way. My God Almighty, somebody praise him here. So God says, although you are going through, I have some thoughts concerning you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Although all hell is on your heels. I wish I could get a smile from some of the choir members. Seem as though some of you are in hell, but I'm going to dig you out today. Don't worry, you're coming out. Amen. Although all hell is on your heels. Although the tempest is raging. Although the billows are dashing high. Although you see no way out. God said, I have some thoughts concerning you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I can remember days of my life when no sun would shine, no moon or star would appear. But God had some thoughts concerning me for the year 2001, although it was early 70s. So that's why I don't feel no way star come too far from where I started from mm -hmm. nobody told me that the road would be easy but I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me tell your neighbor God don't bring you this far to leave you Tell him, get ready, get ready, get ready. God has some good thoughts, good plan, big, bright future. Woo! Yeah, you Roma Mama Satire. Bright future, bright future. 
God holds the future in his hand and every heart he understands my God the glory of God is upon me somebody wave your hands and praise the king of heaven hallelujah I know what I have in my mind concerning you said the Lord want to do you good and not evil <laughs> I want to give you your desired hand I want the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart to get my blessing my blessing Woo! sit down please let me try and preach a little of this message but the anointing of God is heavy in this house. Mm. I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. So don't worry what hell is going on with. Let hell have its way. <laughs> Jesus. Mm. The storm rages. Yet God Almighty says to the raging storm and the wind, Either thou shalt thou come and no further. God said to Job, I command the proud waves of the sea that you come so far and no further. Come on, somebody. So all these them waves rolling back and dashing with 10, 12 feet tide. God don't say hi, give them a command. Come on somebody. God has things under control. I know waves have been dashing. And sometimes it seems as though you are going to be submerged. Amen. Under the, the, the waters are coming up against you. But God says hi, give them a limit. I have them under control. Give him praise. Give him praise. So far and no further. The hungry, hungry lions roar at you. And they muster their strength and coming as though they are going to make mince meat of you. But God said they are chained. I have a chain on each of them. Come on, somebody. So when you see them roaring and coming, just lift up your eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh your help? There's a God who is on your side. There's a God who is in your corner. There's a God who can be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. There's a God who will not give you more than your just deserts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Sometimes it seems as though wicked men, wicked people, amen, flying their reins and their passions over God's people. It would seem as though they are at liberty to afflict the child of God with no restraints. Are you with me? But God has a bound. God has a limit to everything. God has a dimension to everything and God will bring their courses to an end after a while 70 years God said and no more they have had to endure 70 years I don't know what's yours or mine maybe 7 days or 7 years or 7 months or 10 years or 10 days or 3 weeks I don't know but God says whenever it reaches that point I will stand up and say over out enough is enough time to turn around how many really could do well with some good turning around in your life my Osama hold on I saw Debbie and Campbell got up and turned. I was just going to ask you to do that. I'm not a Pokemonia, please. But just stand up and just chip around a little like this. Don't turn a rule. No, it's not a rule we're turning. Just chip around in the name of Uramasata. Yes, in Jesus' name. Yes, symbolic of what God's going to do. Amen. In your life and mine. 
Thank you, thank you. That's enough. That's enough. Oh, yeah. That's enough, the Holy Ghost said. When it reaches that point, time to arrest the situation. Time to turn sorrow into joy. Oh, yes, God has set a limit. A limit to the duration of your suffering. A limit to the duration of your heartache. A limit to the duration of your tears. Can't just cry tears of sorrow all the time. Come on, somebody. God must turn those tears into tears of joy. Are you with me, somebody? When you sit back and look at what God has done, you must have all kinds of emotions. You must cry, you must laugh, you must walk, you must jump, you must shout. All kinds of emotion. You must be overwhelmed to give him thanks. All our time, except the psalmist, are in God's hands. Seventy years could be considered a lifetime. Not many people live to see 70. Think with me for a moment. I want to point something out here that's very important in this message. Because when God told them 70 years, you're going to be down there, and after which I'll turn your captivity. So make preparation by have bill houses and etc. etc. Uh, not many, or might I say few, if any. Of those who were taken captives at that particular point would have survived the 70 years. Come on, somebody. I'm taking you through something here. Not many would have physically survived the 70 years in exile. But what I consider of these the people of God is that they were very patriotic people. True patriots. Amen. The Honorable Governor General say Mr. Siaga is a patriot and the Prime Minister is a prophet. So we are a blessed people. We have a patriot and a prophet at the head of our nation. They were not selfish people. They saw the national good and I'm speaking Israel in Babylon. They saw the national good and the national prosperity of greater importance than their private and personal prosperity. So they were willing and ready to lay the foundation for many generations to come. Come on somebody. Like the Paul Bogles and the George William Gardens and the... Sir Alexander Bustamante and the Norman Washington Manley and the list goes on. Persons who have sweat and toil and have laid the foundation. Some even have sacrificed their lives on the altar so that today we can have a free country. Come on somebody. They were willing to sow the seeds although some of them would not reap the fruits. Hallelujah. Some of the seeds that you and I will sow, brothers and sisters, in this life, we might not reap the fruits. But if the Lord tarries, generations to come, our posterity will come, and some will recognize that someone prayed for me. Someone fasted for me. Someone held on to the horns of the altar for me. Am I talking to anybody here? Hallelujah. I think of the man Moses. The Bible says Moses rejoiced when he stood on Mount Pisgah and viewed the land of Canaan that he would not enter. But he rejoiced. Oh, you're not following me here. Come on, somebody. I could see Moses stand on Pisgah and he looked over because God had already told him you will not enter. But Moses rejoiced that somebody... After many years of toil and labor that somebody would enter the promised land. And God's word would prove to be true. Touch your neighbor and tell them somebody will be blessed. Tell them I hope it will be you. 
but somebody will be blessed somebody must be blessed somebody must eat the fruit of the land and if you hang on long enough honey you are going to eat the good of the land give him praise everybody I think of Simeon God had made him a promise that he would not depart until he see the Christ child and I could see Simeon embrace the Lord Jesus Christ the Savior and after he saw the world Savior he said no Lord if I got to go let me go in peace for mine eyes have seen are you with me somebody Simeon was ready to go and willing to go with an assurance that redemption would be accomplished because I've seen the Messiah. How many have seen glimpses of the glory of God? How many have seen glimpses of the blessings of God? And how many know that God is going to do something great and marvelous in your life? Lift your hands and give him, give him praise by faith somebody. Hallelujah. 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 The tempest tossed and the billows roll. But listen, my brothers and sisters, the voyage will be a short one because Jesus is coming soon and he's doing a quick work. Are you with me? I said the voyage is short. You may not have to spend 21 days like Daniel spent. No time enough for that. You may not have to go around the Jericho Wall seven times. Maybe you just need to do it three times. God is doing a quick work. Come on, somebody. Oh, just get your heart in tune and be sincere and right with God. One shout on the walls could come crumbling down at your feet. Oh, somebody help me praise God in this house. 70 years. Paul would say to us in fame in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. Paul says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Listen to me. If you just keep looking at what these eyes see, honey, the future looks dark. But I look beyond every today's dark cloud. And by faith I see the silver lining. Are you not with me? Amen somebody. You, you've got to, you have to, you, you must travel with foresight and insight as a believer. God said I'm going to let you prosper right there in the land of your adversity. Hallelujah. And it's not he who has the first laugh that has the best laugh. It is he who has the laugh, la, the last laugh. Come on, somebody. The last laugh is the best laugh. Oh, I could see the Babylonians laughing and jeering and rejoicing when they held God's people captive. But I could see God's people saying it's only a matter of time. Come on, somebody. If you got to stay in your corner and groan, you groan and sigh, you sigh and drink a little tear. But when you get out to face the public, do not let them see your tear. Learn to smile through your fears. Hold your head up high and give the world a smile. Don't let the devil put you down. Come on, somebody. Don't give the hypocrites anything to mock about. Even when you don't have a nice dinner, act as though your belly full. And if somebody hypocrite offer you, tell them, no, I am all right. I am okay. Give God chance to work. Touch your neighbor. Tell them, give God chance to work. Hallelujah. God say my thoughts concerning you I know the thoughts I have towards you said the Lord thoughts of peace everybody say peace oh God John 14 27 my peace I leave with you my peace I give unto you not as the world giveth give I unto you let not 
your heart be troubled neither be afraid your God is not dead he's alive and he has no grandchildren his only children come on somebody no grandchild oh, you're a child of the king come on somebody a child of the king his royal blood runs through my vein and now I can shout and I can sing lift your hand and say praise God I'm a child of the king hallelujah God said the thoughts are for peace concerning you and when you look at the verse my brothers and sisters Amen. You realize that it is God's, it is God's plan, it is God's intention, it is God's desire, and what He purposed to do, that He will do. The devil can't stop it. He will fight it. He will buffet it, but it will triumph in the end. Give Him praise. Hallelujah. So when we consider. Amen. The innumerable cares of this vast universe. Think of what it takes to run this universe. I mean, we run a little house, we run a business, you run a family, whatever. And think of the time and the efforts and the energies. And when you consider to keep this universe in its place, and for the galaxies not to fall out of place and mess up everything, are you with me? Talk to me, somebody. Mm. For all of them galaxies to remain there and intact and do not become disorganized and mess up God's universe, there has to be a God who is in control. Come on, somebody. There has to be a God, amen, who orders the affairs of this universe. And when you look at all of that that God has in his infinite mind, yet God has room to think of you and I. Will you not get me here? Some of us can't even find time to think of others because we are so crowded with our little universe around us. Universe of five children and a husband. Now, oh, my God Almighty, that's a whole lot to deal with. But God Almighty, in spite of the vastness and the diverseness of this universe, yet God find time to think of me individual. Oh, you're not thinking this thing through with me? Oh, God, when do you find time? to think about me oh uh, what is the smallest particle M molecule molecule yes yeah. smallest particle a molecule yet God finds time to think of a little speck like me everybody say me and then God said when I begin thinking about you I don't think of the family you came from. I don't think of the mess you have been in. That doesn't influence my thoughts. Oh, you're not with me. <laughs> All right. When you go into your district now and ask some people what they think about you, and they start from your great-grandfather, and when they get through coming up the line and reach to you, they say, mm-mm, no good can't think anything good of you doom destined for destruction but God's not going back to father and our great-grandfather he's not even going back to Adam when God wants to think of us you know where he starts he looked on Calvary and he saw a man who hung there he saw blood dripping from his side and from his hands and from his head he looked and he saw an empty tomb. And he looked at his side and he saw one clothed in majesty and power and dominion and might. And God started to see us through this man right here. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our righteousness, our king, our savior. He doesn't start with your generation. He starts with Jesus. You're not getting my message here. Hallelujah. If he had gone back to our generation, 
then all he would see filter rocks. But when he starts with Jesus and he sees us in Jesus, he sees righteousness, he sees holiness, he sees a perfect man, he sees a complete man, he sees a man fit for the kingdom. Are you with me, somebody? Mm. Thoughts to do you good and not evil. Give him praise. Room to think about us. To condescend low enough to meet with us. To concern himself with our needs. My needs can be touched with the feeling of my infirmities. He knows what I go through. And he does not at any time isolate himself from me. No divorce. I'm going through it with you. You'll never walk alone. And when it gets too heavy for you to handle and to bear, you can't carry, I pick you up. So when you see only one set of footprints, don't ask me what happened. I did not leave you. You could not walk that part of the journey. So with my loving arms, I lift you up. Oh God, I would to God you would really embrace what I'm bringing across to you today. A God, a Jesus who says, I will be there. You say, you think I will not be? Well, wait until you get into the waters. You'll find something out. They will not overflow you because I'll be there. Wait until you get into the midst of the burning fire. You'll find out I'm there. Wait until Daniel hit the cage of the lion, the den, and he found out that someone has been there and is still there waiting on him. Lift your hands and give him praise, everybody. What God thinks about us is of great importance. Are you with me? Well, before we examine God's thoughts a little more, if I have time, let's examine our thoughts. How we usually think about our one another. In as much as some of us are born again. But usually, our thoughts are blinded by prejudice. Well, I just don't love you. I don't like you because of A, B, or C. Our thoughts are usually blinded by prejudice. It doesn't have to be color prejudice. We have all kinds of prejudice. Well, you can't dress like how I dress, so you're not in my category. You don't live where I live, the community I live in, so no. You're not as educated as I am, so no. Look at my job, my profession, comparing to yours. Oh, no. We can't share fellowship. Our thoughts are usually blinded by prejudice. And sometimes they are often colored by the kind of passions that we carry. We are changing beings. And all kinds of passion and emotions arise in us from time to time. Are you with me? Our thoughts sometimes are limited because of ignorance. Are you with me? Oh, we do not know what we ought to know. And because of that, we make unfair judgment. Limited by ignorance. And how many time, it, times it has proven itself that you should not just judge a case all by yourself. You must study the thing properly. Some folks are ready to be judged, arresting officer judge jury everybody in the case and when they condemn you honey you are gone for life ignorance causes our thoughts to be limited sometimes our thoughts are perverted because we just think bad things we want good for ourselves we want good for our children but we do not want it for others oh my children passed their exam and they are doing well Sorry you told that to your neighbor because you thought they meant your children well. But when you tell them that, honey, you drove a dagger in their hearts. Excuse me, please. But the Bible.
Bible says you must rejoice with them that rejoice. Be of the same mind one to another. Are you with me? Let me get back to the text. That's the thoughts of the carnal man. John chapter 3 and verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is. So you see why flesh must be born again in order to operate in the will of God. That which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit. That which is carnal is carnal and carnal. That which is spiritual is spiritual. And to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritual minded is life. And peace. Touch your head and say, Lord, touch my mind again. Hallelujah. God's thoughts are pure thoughts. And God's thoughts, I want you to get this. God's thought is like a preface or a prelude to God's actions. So when you know God's thoughts, you, you almost know the actions that will follow. Come on, somebody. Because he is who we call the immutable God. It means he doesn't change. He cannot change. So when you know God's thoughts, you can almost determine God's action. Unlike human beings, we tell you one thing. And by the time we turn around the corner there, we talk with somebody and everything change. Are you with me? Touch your neighbor and tell them that's not God. Hallelujah. Thoughts concerning you, said the Lord, are to do you good. Thoughts of peace. Peace, oh God Almighty. Thoughts of peace, said the Lord. And not evil. Thoughts to give you an experience. In hand, and when I read it, because it impresses on my heart so much, I say, Lord, my life is in your hand. You know the desires of my heart. God, you know I don't want to go around sick and distressed and diseased. Talk to me. You know I don't want to go around poverty and begging and, and scratching for, for meals. You know I love to have what to eat, Lord. You know, I don't want JPS and Water Commission and whoever they are to cut off my utilities, Lord. Anybody wants that to happen? So, Lord, you know, I need some blessing. God, you know, I need health. So I don't have to seek for healing. Touch your body and say, this must be healthy. Hallelujah. When you have health, you don't have to look for healing. What we need is health. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God promised to bless us with good health. My thoughts are of peace. A good life. And when, although God finds it necessary sometimes. Now catch this also. Although he finds it necessary sometimes to punish. His desire is to bless. Come on, somebody. Although he finds it necessary a time to chasten, for which father doesn't chasten the son whom he loves? Are you with me? Faint not therefore at the chastening of the Lord, for whom he loveth he chasteneth. And no chastening seem to be good at the present moment. But afterwards, said the scripture, it yieldeth forth peaceable fruits of righteousness to them that are exercised thereby. So although sometimes it becomes necessary to punish, to chasten, his sole desire is to bless. Lift your hand and say, bless me. Say it again, somebody. Say it again, somebody. Hallelujah. And oftentimes because we do not understand the mind of God, the will of God, the workings of God, the ways of God. Paul says in Romans 11, 34, how oh, unsearchable are his thoughts and his ways are past finding out. Sometimes because we do not understand it, we act as though God is working against us. God never works against his people. Are you with me? 
Mm. Look with me now as I prepare to wind it up and preach a little if I can. The text of verses 12 and 14, or 12 through 14, Jeremiah 29. Look at the words. Then shall he call upon me, and he shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart and I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I cause you to be carried away captive. Give him praise, somebody. Hallelujah. Some of the grandest promises, my brothers and sisters, some of the most consul consolating words or words of consolation can be found in this situation and I want you to put yourself in the state where his will were because for you to understand it and for you to appreciate it you might not appreciate it from your positions of luxury right now you got to go down where they were come on somebody for you to appreciate it, you got to go down. We have the woman in Mark 5 who suffered for 12 long years where she was. For you to appreciate this, you got to go to the leper camp where the four leprous men were. Oh, you're not following me here. For you to appreciate this, you got to go where Nehemiah was. Captain of the host of the king of Syria, but he was a leprosy. Put yourself in that woman's position. Put yourself in those lepers' position. Put yourself in the Haman's position. And here the God of heaven came by and told you those words. That's why it would mean much to you. So this ministry is for those who are down and out, whose back is against the wall, who have been going through adversity, and the devil tells you this is your hand. The devil tells you no way out. And here the great God of heaven, he comes by this morning, and he says to you, you can call unto me right now, and I will hear you. Hear the God of heaven is saying, begin to seek for me. Begin to search for me. And I will make myself available. You are going to find me, said God. And when you find me, I'm going to turn your captivity. I'm going to turn your sorrow into joy. I'm going to turn your midnight into daylight. I'm going to turn your scars into stars I'm going to turn things around and the devil who thought this would be the end of you he's going to see you like a tree planted by the rivers of waters he's going to see those dead dry branches begin to send out leaves he's going to see new, new shoot coming out he's going to see blossom and after a while he's going to see fruits and he can't do nothing about it because 70 years have come and 70 years are gone for you the time has already come it's time for the fruits to be born it's time for you to become the head and not the tail it's time for you to tell somebody I got something to lend and I can't find any borrower I would to God the day will come brother DC when all we have in the church are lenders 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 you're looking for somebody to borrow you're looking for somebody to give up but everybody's cup would be full and running over because the blessings of God which make it rich and added no sorrow is flowing in Mount Zion oh somebody lift up your hands and praise God hallelujah come on somebody 
I say to a woman today, your 12 years have come to an end. No more issue of blood. I say to a Zacchaeus, you stay long on the sycamore tree. Jesus is passing by. I say to a blind Bartimaeus, throw down your beggar's garment. Throw down the cup. Put away your white robe. Get ready to enjoy the blessings of God. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. You have prayed. You have fasted. You have given. You love. You forgive. It's time. Time, 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 time. Lift your hand and say, time enough, time enough. Time enough, time enough. Touch your neighbor, tell him it's time. It's time. It's time. My God Almighty, you have seen, you have seen water turn into blood. You see frogs on the land. You know about lice on the land. You know marine diseases. God Almighty, can I preach as I close? You know all of those things. You know the death of the firstborn. Now it's time to get up out of Egypt and head for the Canaan's land. You have seen all of those adversities oh come on joseph come on you have been hated long enough you have been lied on you have been rejected you have been imprisoned come on joseph come on you have interpreted dreams come on joseph come on the baker let you down Come on, Joseph. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The time has come. The time has come. The time has come. Oh, my God, somebody praise the King of Heaven. Hallelujah. That's my thoughts concerning you, said the Lord. I want to do you good, I want to give you your desired hand. The devil shall not say ha ha so would we have it get ready to run through your troop get ready to leap over your wall and if you have gone six times around the walls of Jericho one more march one more walk one more shout oh God Almighty just one more hey Yerusha Baba Satan ho 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 yes hallelujah one more one more god hey, hey my god you're getting it sister one more just one more my god the holy ghost is over you yes one more get it in jesus name get it yes just one more in the name of jesus I know the thoughts I have concerning you, said the Lord. The thoughts of peace and not of evil. Because I want to give you your desired hand. <laughs> what do you see of yourself? One day time, three days time, on the shortest term. How do you see yourself five years time, the Lord tires? How do you see yourself another decade from now? The Lord tarries. Tell me what do you see? Tell me not, tell me not, tell me not, talk to me. You don't see nothing, you better start seeing something, honey. Because if you don't see nothing, ten years come, there'll be nothing down there. But I see something. I see the glory. <laughs> of the risen life. Thank you, Jesus. My God, everybody in this house right now, first of all, let me call for those who are not saved because you are prime target in this service. Every unsaved and every backslider, please come on down. God said, I know the thoughts I have concerning you. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter the life you've lived. Oh God Almighty. It doesn't matter what you have done. 
God said that doesn't matter my thoughts are my thoughts don't even try to equate them with your situation I said there's no way God could think good of me don't even try to do that because he is God he is not man he is God hallelujah 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 come, come, come and let the Holy Spirit the God who has great thoughts about you great plans for your future great plans great plans young men great plans young girls great plans moms and dad knowing it's Jesus oh it is Jesus it is Jesus in my soul oh. Everybody, close your eyes. Get in touch. Get in touch. It is Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the hem of His garment, and His blood. should be because of us so whatever category you place yourself in you expect him to act accordingly you put yourself in the category of the righteous then you expect him to deal righteously with you you put yourself in the category of the unrighteous then all you expect is a judgment of God condemnation but I want every one of us to neutralize ourselves this morning neutralize yourself you're not on the side of the righteous nor the unrighteous in other words you're gonna say God this is all because of you It's not me this is just you your thoughts concerning me it's because of you I want you to neutralize yourself right now and when you do so we are going to begin to worship God and to thank him and praise him 
and he is going to release an anointing upon your life right now that anointing is going to bring salvation it's going to be accompanied with healing with miracles some of you can be filled with the holy ghost right now for some of your doors are going to be opened up and you are going to see supernatural things happening in your life so, so don't bank on you or bank against you come on take you out of it put jesus put jesus in the picture he is he is he is lift your hands everybody close up your eyes and begin to worship god of heaven it's because of jesus what a good time to worship him ain't nobody listening to you ain't nobody watching you it is every man for himself and god for every man come on every man for himself and god for every man oh My God, I think somebody was getting ready to praise God. I think somebody was getting ready to receive the release of an anointing from God who say enough is enough. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. In that holy name of Jesus. In that powerful name of Jesus. Oh my God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Spirit of the living God. Fall. Somebody go for that anointing. My God, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. We release a powerful mighty God. The power to save. The power to heal. The power to deliver, the power to set men and women free in the name of Jesus. Oh, Rama Mama Satora Baba Sata, Eya Marune Seketeya. Oh, ho, 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 ho. My God, look at the Holy Ghost touching somebody. Look at the Holy Ghost bringing healing. Look at the wings of the snow white dove. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Look at the wings of the snow white dove. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, Lord. 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 Elima Soroma Satea Raba Bukurine Sete Eya, Eya, Eya Eya, enough is enough, is enough, is enough, is enough, is enough. Oh, Lord Shaha, my God. My God. My God! My God! My God! Hey yo! I saw somebody's in the house bigger than all of us! Somebody's in the house! The presence of the Lord!
thank you. God, somebody's touching me here. Somebody's touching me. Somebody's saying, go forward. Somebody say, get up and go. Get up and go. Praise the Lord. 